Good morning and welcome to uh, morning prayer today. Good to see you. You can see me now. I've got the camera sorted. Good morning to you. As always, uh, we have two Bible readings and we join together in prayer. Our two Bible readings today are from 1 Samuel chapter 20, verses 1 to 17. That's 1 Samuel 20, 1 to 17. And in that we find some of the uh, communication between David and Jonathan. In fact, in this part of the story, uh, David consults uh, Jonathan. And our New Testament reading is Acts 1, verse 15 to the end. That's Acts 1, 15 to uh, to the end and in there we find part of the discourse amongst the disciples after the ascension of Jesus uh, and their choosing of someone to replace Judas. Uh, as always our Bible readings we allow in this act of worship to speak uh, for themselves so the words will be on the screen for you to follow but if you want to look them up 1 Samuel 20 1 to 17 and Acts 1 15 uh, to the end. Uh, and I'm acutely aware that a lot of people will uh, either be watching this live or recorded later during uh, the day or even on a different day in this holiday season. Uh, so whenever you are joining in uh, with us, do use the comments box for your prayers, for things that God has stirred amongst you, or maybe something you've been inspired uh, from one of the prayers or one of the readings that we share uh, today. So whether you're watching this live or you're watching it recorded, do put them in the comments uh, that we might join together as a community and pray uh, together. If during the course of the service I can pick up on any of the comments uh, in the live stream from my phone, then I'll, I'll mention them. But all those comments placed, and indeed those put later today or a different day, they will be picked up on and they will be prayed uh, into. I'm going to get rid of my face for you again so that you can have the words on the screen in front of you should you wish to join in. As always, uh, you can join in with all of them, uh, or if you prefer just to use them as a response, then the words in bold are for you. Let's begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So we come to the first of our two Bible readings. 1 Samuel chapter 20. David fled from Naoth to Ramah. He came before Jonathan and said, What have I done? What is my guilt? And what is my sin against your father that he is trying to take my life? He said to him, Perish the thought. You shall not die. My father does nothing, either great or small, without disclosing it to me. And why should my father hide this from me? Never. But David also swore, Your father knows well that you like me. And he thinks, do not let Jonathan know this, or he will be grieved. But truly, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, there is but a step between me and death. Then Jonathan said to David, whatever you say, I will do for you. David said to Jonathan, tomorrow is the new moon, and I shall not fail to sit with the king at the meal. But let me go, so that I may hide in the field until the third evening. If your father misses me at all, then say, David earnestly asked leave of me to run to Bethlehem, his city, for there is a yearly sacrifice there for all the family. If he says, Good, it will be well with your servant, but if he is angry, then know that evil has been determined by him. Therefore deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a sacred covenant with you. But if there is guilt in me, kill me yourself. Why should you bring me to your father? Jonathan said, Far be it from you. If I knew that it was decided by my father that evil should come upon you, would I not tell you? Then David said to Jonathan, Who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? Jonathan replied to David, Come, let us go out into the field. So they both went out into the field. 
Jonathan said to David, By the Lord, the God of Israel, when I have sounded out my father about this time tomorrow or on the third day, if he is well disposed towards David, shall I not then send and disclose it to you? But if my father intends to do you harm, the Lord do so to Jonathan, and more also, if I do not disclose it to you and send you away so that you may go in safety. May the Lord be with you, as he has been with my father. If I am still alive, show me the faithful love of the Lord. But if I die, never cut off your faithful love for my house, even if the Lord were to cut off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. Thus Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord seek out the enemies of David. Jonathan made David swear again by his love for him, for he loved him as he loved his own life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so to our New Testament reading, taken from Acts chapter 1, beginning at 50. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness, and falling headlong, he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out. This became known to all the residents of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their language Hakeldama, that is, field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his homestead become desolate, and let there be no one to live in it. And let another take his position of overseer. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's say the words of the Song of Zechariah together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen indeed. So let's gather our thoughts together as we come now to a time of prayer. And as I said, do use the comments box 
on this service feed to whatever time of the day you're engaging in this uh, place matters of prayer for us all to join together. Let's be still. Thank you, God, for your written word. Thank you that we can read sections of your word that inspire us to think of you, that guide us to perhaps reading more of your word. Thinking in particular of that relationship between David and Jonathan from our first reading. Father, maybe you're inspiring us to go and read some more of uh, the story of their connection and connectivity and support for each other. Thinking of our second reading from Acts, we see the importance of togetherness in ministry. That when uh, one is no longer there, there is opportunity to uh, encourage and equip and instill someone else to take their place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to offer each other up to you in Jesus' name. Uh, those of us with families, we pray for them. Those of us who live on our own, we pray for those that we know and yet at this time uh, may not be able to uh, see that often. We perhaps think of uh, school friends or work colleagues or those over the years that we have socialised with. And for each one, we ask for your blessing, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you called us to be your church, to share fellowship with each other, to be your family in this place, to be one people united and bound together in love, forming your body, the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer particularly today as we think of a world that continues to hurt and to suffer natural tragedies, man-made tragedies, much suffering and displacement, much hunger and homelessness, a lack of work or of finance, and of course in this season, not just with COVID, but with other atrocities, death. And so we come together recognising that you've called us as your people, not just here in Chippenham, but as a wider fellowship across your world. And a fellowship that extends across denominational differences and of uh, differences between faith and no faith. Beyond geographical boundaries into every corner of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we come to learn and to listen. Teach us by your word that is both written and living. Inspire us, challenge us, and feed us, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer continue to pray for all those in positions of authority and of power. We ask for them to be granted grace with any power that they feel that they hold. And we ask for their minds and hearts to be full of love, full of justice and full of wisdom for decisions made. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let 
There will be other prayers that you have brought with you today and indeed other prayers that you are inspired to share. And as I said before on two occasions, do use the comments box and to share with us and allow each of us to join together with what God has placed on your heart uh, to pray for in Jesus' name. For now, we draw our prayers towards a close with the collect for today. God of peace, who in the poverty of the blessed Clare gave us a clear light to shine in the darkness of this world, give us grace so to follow in her footsteps that we may at the last rejoice with her in your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering all our prayers together in one, we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning for morning prayer. Uh, a reminder that on Thursday at 10 o'clock on this Facebook channel and YouTube channel, uh, there will be a song offered. Uh, and I think there is a prayer with this week's song uh, too. And that pattern continues throughout the summer months. Tuesday morning prayer at 10 o'clock and Thursday at 10 o'clock, uh, a worship song or a hymn offered for your reflection. And of course, that's in addition to our Sunday morning service, also at 10 o'clock and uh, also live streamed on this Facebook and this YouTube uh, channel. The building is, of course, open now uh, on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, there are many signs and uh, many uh, things that you need to do uh, in order to be safe in the environment of worship at the moment, one of which is wearing a face covering, uh, but also social distancing. Uh, measures are in place, of course. That does limit our numbers. So for those of you who can choose to continue engaging digitally, uh, bless you, and we look forward to seeing you. And for those who can't engage digitally so well, or perhaps are on their own and choose to come uh, to the building on a Sunday at 10 o'clock, then we look forward to seeing uh, and welcoming you uh, then. But for now and for today, uh, we finish with the words of conclusion as we bless each other. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>